questions? I say yes. Thank you. Any question from 8.1? The negative exponent. Okay. Before the question um, discussion on 8.1 homework, someone asked, how do you do this? Okay. Can anyone answer this? 2 to the power negative 1. What is that? 1 half, right? What is the negative exponent uh, does for me or for you? Actually, by definition, by definition, x to the power negative 1 is 1 over x, okay? A number to the power negative 1 is taking its reciprocal. So what happens if you have x to the power negative 3? We say that we want to change the exponent to positive by taking the reciprocal of this base. So what is the reciprocal of x? 1 over x, right? And then the power will become positive 3. Is that okay? That is something you have learned in the previous course. Okay, so let's do more. Like x to the power negative 5. What is that? It is 1 over x and then to the power 5, which is 1 over x to the power 5, right? Is that okay? These are all the same. Yeah, because it's 1 over x times 1 over x five times. Right? Okay, good. So this is 1 over x to the power 3. Is that okay? All right, so now question from 8.1. Okay, you want to verify F and G are inverses of each other. Okay, now, remember we say what is the inverse of a function, okay? If I have function F, define and it is 1 to 1, it will have its inverse, okay? So say that the inverse is called g. How do you verify that they are inverses of each other? Then let's see. Let me give you an example. This is a 1 to 1 function, okay? So if this is a one-to-one -one function, its inverse is also what? A function, right? And we can define its inverse function. Okay, now let's start with number three. Number three, as an input through the function f, what do you get? What do you get, my friend? Negative one, right? Okay, so you say f of three equals to negative one. Are you with me? And then f of negative 5 is what? 2. two. f of 7 is what? 4. Is that right? Now, I'm going to look at its inverse. So what happened to its inverse? Okay, so I'm going to take, for example, 2 to start with. What is the output? If 2 is the input through this, what will be the output? It will be what? Negative 5. Negative 5. Okay? What about 4? What will be the output? 7. 7. How about negative 1? 
it will be 3. Are you all with me? Okay, so if, if this function is f inverse, what would happen? If this function is the inverse of f, then you say starting with 3, going f is going to negative 1, right? And then going through the inverse function, negative 1 is going to go back to where? To 3. Okay? So, it shows if you start with the output through f and then go through the inverse, you are going to go back to wherever you start. One more time. 3 will map to negative 1, right? Through function f. Through the inverse, I'm going to what? Go back to 3. Okay, let's look at negative 5. Negative 5 goes through f, it's going where? 2. Goes through the inverse function, it's going to what? Go back to 5. 7 goes through function f, you go where? 4. Goes through the inverse, it's going to go back to what? 7. Seven. Wonderful. So what does it say? Actually it says, if you want to verify two functions are inverses of each other, you need to verify that start with, start with f, okay? Start with x, x goes through f, you get f of x, right? And then I'm going to use f of x, see? This is x. This is f of x. Am I correct? I need everybody's attention because this is a, a, a concept that a lot of students not quite understand, okay? But it's very straightforward. What do you mean by inverse? Means you go back wherever you are from, right? 3, go through function f, you come to negative 1, okay? And then you go back, you go back through the inverse function, so I'm using f of x as input, and I'm going through the inverse function. Do you understand what I'm saying? First, I do f, right? And then, I do f inverse. And what do you get? You should go back to, to wherever you are from. Is that okay? Yes. No, 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 I am not done yet. Oh, well, we're not done. I'm just explaining because, yeah, and I need people, I need all of you get this understanding. Okay, it's just like you're taking a train from Los Angeles to San Diego. Okay, you say, I'm going to take the inverse train. Then going down to San Diego is the train, and then the inverse train will take you back to where? Los Angeles, right? Go from Los Angeles to San Diego through the train, and then the inverse train will take you back to Los Angeles. Okay? You start with somewhere, take the train, you come to, the Los, come to San Diego, and then you take the inverse train, walk back to Los Angeles. Wherever you start, you are going to go back to the, the place. Is that okay? How about people say, Dr. Chen, I'm going to start with the inverse function. Can you tell me what is the inverse function? The inverse function is this way, right? The inverse function is this way. Am I correct? Yeah. This is the domain. That is the range. Okay, look, let's start with one, prop, one, one number. Can anybody start with one number here? It's two. Okay, so start with two. So two, I'm starting with two. Am I going through f inverse? Two will go to where? Negative five. Thank you. And then I'm taking that as input, and then I will go through f. It will go where? 2. two. One more time. I start with 2. I go through f inverse first. I go to negative 5, right? And then I take that function f, then I will go back to 2. What do you see? You start with 2, go through an f inverse, and then go through f. You will come back to wherever you start, right? Are you with me? So, to verify two functions are inverses of each other, you see that no matter which way you start, you will go back to wherever you start. Okay? In other words,
to verify that, you need to verify that these two functions, when you compose with it, it's identical. Okay? It is identical. So, to show that, more markers. We are going to, may I erase this? Yes. OK. We want to show that f composed with g of x is x. And g composed with f of x is x. Is that OK? Means well, right now, you here, I know they are inverses, so it is true. If you want to have two functions and you want to show they are inverse of each other, then you, are sh you try to make sure composition of those two functions will be an identity function. It means the input and output are identical. All right? OK, so give me one, one problem. Which one that you want us to do? Uh-huh. Is what? Equals eight over x minus six. Okay, and g is eight over six. I mean eight over x plus six, sorry. Here? Yeah. No, no, no. no that one's right. That one is right. Okay. Eight over x plus six. Okay. You want to show that they are inverses of each other, right? So you need to show both, this and that. OK? So let's see. What is this? OK. Can you tell me what is this? This is f of g of x, right? OK. Now, what is g of x? It's 8 over x plus 6. Yeah? Yes? OK. Now, what is f? f is here. So now this is becoming your input for, this is your input now. OK, the whole purple part is the input for function f. So you are going to make this purple part substituted into the function f here. So wherever you see x, you are going to replace by this purple part. Does it make sense to all of you? Yes? Great job. So now you have what? This is 8 over. Remember, this is f of this purple part. So it's 8 over the purple part, OK, minus 6. Are you with me? Yes. What is the purple part here? It's 8 over x plus 6, right? Are you with me, my friend? OK? All this part, is that OK? Now you just need to what? Simplify it. 8 over x plus 6 minus 6 plus 6 minus 6, that will subtract off. So you have 8 over 8 over x. What is 8 divided by 8 over x? How do you do that? How do you do this division? It's 8 divided by 8 over x means 8 times what? x over 8. Is that OK for all of you? And what is this? You get what? x. So f composed with g of x equals x. Great. That is the first part, right? That's the first part. All right, now we get this done. We still need to get the second part done. Okay. G of f of x is also x. Okay? So now I let you do that one. Okay? So this part, so f composed with g of x now equal to x. Now you need to do 
g composed of f, g composed of f of x, see what is that? What is g composed with f of x? It's g of f of x. Is that right? What is f of x? You copy down g, and then f of x is? is 8 over x minus 6. Right? Okay? Now we are going to evaluate g of this purple part. So look at g. What is g? g is 8 over x plus x. So it will become 8 over the purple part, okay, and then plus 6. Is that right? Okay? Does it make sense to all of you? What is this? What is this? What is this? Let me make it red. Okay? So what is that? It's 8 multiply its reciprocal, right? So you get what? It's 8 multiply its reciprocal. What did you get then? Very good. It's x minus 6 and then plus 6. So the answer is also x. So see, this composed with f is also x. So it means what? They are inverses of each other. OK? So this is done, and that is done. So it shows they are inverses of each other for this problem. OK? Question. All right. Any more from 8.1? Yes. Sure. OK. May I erase this now? Did you, did you take it? Yes. You can. Could you please repeat that problem? Uh, Number 19. Okay, now everyone, look at this problem. P of x is a reciprocal function. Do you see that? It's a reciprocal function shifted to where? What is a reciprocal function? 1 over x, right? From here to here, you have to shift to the left 12 units. Okay, the reciprocal function have what kind of shape? What page? OK, the reciprocal function we already plot, uh, plotted last time that has this shape. Is that right? Is this one to one, my friend? Yes, this is one to one, right? Because you can use horizontal line test. Yeah? Yes? It is one to one. So it has a what? It's inverse. So first of all, you have to say the inverse exists, and then you find it, right? Say, since p of x is 1 to 1, p inverse exists, OK? Because sometimes it's not. Now you can find it. How to find it? Step one. You would like to let output y to be the p of x, right? So you have input here, 
and you have output represented by y, right? How do you find the inverse? You interchange what? The, inver uh, the input and output, right? So interchange x and y. Then what do you get? x equals 1 over y plus 12, right? And you want to solve for y. So step three, you solve for y. How do you solve for y now? Okay, well now y is in the denominator, right? How do you solve it? How do you solve it? Okay, um, you try to, this is x over 1. Do you see that? So you can have x multiply this equals to 1 times 1, right? Are you with me? So x times y plus 12 equals to 1, okay? Yes? And xy plus 12x equals to 1, right? You want to find y, so you isolate your y. So get rid of this term. How do you get rid of 12x? You subtract 12x on both sides, yes? So xy equals to 1 minus 12x, yes? Because you take away 12x. Now, yes? Yes, I want to solve for y. How did you solve it? I am looking at this as x over 1 equal to 1 over y plus 12. And then I just use, because it's in proportion, so x times y plus 12 equals to 1 times 1. Okay? Is that okay? Or you just think that I multiply the LCD. What is the LCD right now? y plus 12. I multiply y plus 12 on both sides, right? I multiply y plus 12. When I multiply y plus 12 here, it will become 1. Yes? Is it okay? Now, how do you find your y? You divide both sides by? So y equals to 1 minus 12x over x. How can you get rid of the x? Oh, you, you want to divide down? Can you? No. Because this is a what? This is a, yeah, there are two terms here. It's not in product. When you divide down, it has to be common factor, right? Common factor means they are multiplied together. They are not. It is a subtraction or addition. Then you cannot just, you cannot just, divide out the common factor. It's not a common factor. You have to write it in factorization form, multiply together to consider as a factor. But this is not a factor, no. Thank you for asking. Extra point. <laughs> Some of you need to remind me because I haven't recorded those. Okay. All right. So. You, so. Switch x back to y? Uh, you mean interchange x and y? Because when you look at the inverse, remember when we draw here, okay, when you come here, it was x and then you y here, right? And it is a convention. When we want to talk about input, we would like to use x as input. Now, when I look at the inverse, here is y. It is okay that you solve for x, but then conventionally, we choose variable x for the input. So we say, oh, let me rename you as x. Let me rename this as y. I want to see how this related to that. So I call this x, I call that y, and then solve for y. Some of you might solve for x, and then at the end, uh, you just need to know y is input, x is output, then that's okay. Is that okay? All right, so now you have to conclude. How do you conclude it? You will say, so P inverse equals to what? P inverse of X equals to 1 minus 12X over X. Great job. Who asked this question? Great problem. Great problem because this 
is similar to that one. Okay, if you know how to do this, you will know how to do that quiz problem. Yes. Okay. Um, I will have today's quiz as take home, okay? Because we don't have time to, to um, you know, we have to move on a little bit so I can help you to prepare for your exam. All right. Um, so that quiz problem, take it down. You are turning uh, tomorrow, okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, you are going to have your test on Tuesday. However, I would like to talk to you. In order for you to have uh, the load evenly distributed, I think all of you are comfortable with the graphing, but maybe not with the inverse yet, right? So I'm thinking maybe split, split the exam to two parts. So tomorrow we will have like 30, 35 minutes for one part. And then I can review for you guys for the Tuesday exam on the other part. Would that be better for you? We will have just part of the exam tomorrow. I will have separate par two parts. So that you focus on the graphing today, okay? We'll do some, um, you have all those material to review, like how you shift. We have done that for so many days, right? And then we will have the Tuesday for uh, exponential and then logarithm and, you know, other inverse finding. Is that okay? Yes, it's, it's there. I mean, I already sent everybody the, uh, the outcomes for all those sections. Yeah. So all the graphing tomorrow and then? And then the inverse, finding the inverse, and then uh, for the exponential and logarithmic that we are going to learn right now, tomorrow I'm going to go over it again with all of you. Okay? Yeah? And then the, uh, the problems uh, that you should all review, I have, I will, you know, let you know. Uh, this is the, the blue packet. I keep saying that you should try to do it. You can, I know, many of you already done it, and I'm very proud of you. I mean, yeah, okay. Which one? Oh, I said already 15 you don't need to do, 16 you don't need to do, yeah. And then the 13 is going to be, I'm going to go over. We already said it yesterday, but I'm going to tell you more about 13, yes. Yeah, for part two. We can use a calculator. Uh, you don't need that. I will tell you why not. So yeah. And no, 14? no, 15 and 16. Yeah, no, 15. The last two questions. So, not, no 15, no 16. And, what and, else? and then the 13. Yeah. 13 is going to be uh, having an uh, you know, exponential. It will be pushed to Tuesday. It's going to be pushed to Tuesday. Right. Okay. And the purple one is similar to that. Okay. And you're going to have evaluation like a, a purple form. Do you see that purple form? The purple form is not until Tuesday though, right? The purple form is going to be... Because it's logarithm and everything. Uh, you have log. It will have the... Uh, only the log is going to be on Tuesday. Okay? But as some of them, you can review using them as review. So okay? For example, like... Um, I can tell you which one is going to be pushed to Tuesday yes. on the packet, purple, purple packet. <laughs> yes, I'm going to tell you, okay. One, two, three, uh, four, okay, five, five, uh, five A, but five B will be pushed to Tuesday. Okay, six. Only 5B so far, pushed to Tuesday, right? Yeah. Everything is, is or already covered, and you feel comfortable right now. And then um, 6, 6I, 6I pushed to Tuesday. Okay. Only two problems push to Tuesday. Okay? Only only two problems right now push to Tuesday. And number 
uh, 7 is to discuss whether it's 1 to 1. You just need to say, yeah, it is cubic. It's a, it's a shift uh, you know, transformation for a cubic function. So it's increasing, so it's 1 to 1. We will, we will do this. So for the, uh, for the 7 and 8, it's going to be pushed to Tuesday. Yeah, 7 and 8 will be pushed to Tuesday. Okay, it's finding the, the inverse, like what we did today. But I think you're getting it now, right? You're getting it, so we, we can have a little bit more time. I'm not worrying about that. Okay, I, I'm, I'm hoping that we will do a good job. 9, uh, it's going to be included tomorrow. Yeah, 9 is tomorrow. And 10 is going to be Tuesday, but you already learned it. 10 is going to be Tuesday. 11 is going to be Tuesday. Is that clear? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then there will be, the part that I'm going to go over today is going to be Tuesday too, okay? And then the blue packet, all of it is Tuesday. I mean, I mean, uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Um, except the one that I just told, told you. 13, 15, and 16. Okay, 15 and 16, you don't need to worry about it at all. Okay, only the 13 is pushed to Tuesday. All right, so far okay? All right, now, can I have all of you? Um, let me erase this. Have you take down this quiz? So tomorrow is a very light uh, graphing part. You to find a domain, a range, and so forth, okay? Um, can I have all of you look at 8.2 on your book? Okay. We will have 8.2, 8.3, because they are together. We are talking about inverses. Yesterday we already started. Okay, how do we graph y equal to 2 to the power x? How do we do that? Okay, you plot points. This is one of the fundamental functions, right? Okay, when x equal to 0, when x equal to 0, what is y? 1, okay. Now, I need you to quickly use your graph paper and plot this function, 2 to the power x, okay? Bless you. Okay, can I have all of you have a graph paper plot this function? Thank you. Plot this function, 2 to the power x, quickly. Definition. We're talking about an exponential function. This is an exponential function with what base? This is your base, base 2. This is exponent. An exponential function with base a, okay, is written as a to the power x. And exponential function, okay, with base A is is defined by 
f of x equals to a to the power x. a is the base. Now variable is in the exponent. OK? And the base a has some restriction. What is the restriction for a? What is the restriction for a? You where a cannot equal to 1, and a is what? Greater than 0. Thank you. This is very important. When we talk about exponential functions, the base will never be equal to a. We never use base 1, OK? But it could be any positive number. So right now, what is the base that I want you to graph? 2. And what did you see? When x equal to 0, it is 1. When x equal to 1, it is what? 2. When x equal to 2, it is? 4. When x equal to 3, it is? 8. 5, 6, 7, 8. OK. Can I use negative number? Yes. yes. When x equal to negative 1, it is? 1 half. When x equal to negative 2, it is? 1 fourth. When x equal to negative 3, it is? 1 eighth. So what do you see? It is an increasing function. And it, it, and it increases very, very rapidly. OK? It increases rapidly. This is a very, very steep. Uh, grows, okay? Do you see this? We have, this is our second time. It is increasing. Can you write down increasing? When the base is, pos uh, is greater than 1, when the base is greater than 1, okay, the graph will be increasing. How about if I have y equals to 2 uh, to 3 to the power x. My base is changed to 3. What happened? What happened? Sorry? When x equal to 0, it is what? Still 1, right? When x equal to 1, it will become 3. When x equal to 2, it will become 9. Oh, here. Wow. Do you see that purple curve? OK. It is above this, this black curve when it is positive. How about when x equal to negative 1? Negative 1, it will be 1 third. 1 third is under or above 1 half. Oh, 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 my friend, my friend, you are my good friend, okay. When x equal to 0, y equals to 1. When x equal to 1, y equals to 3. When x equal to 3, y equals to 9, no problem. When x equal to negative 1, it is 1 over 3, and 1 over 3, means 1, you chop into 3 parts, right? Is that greater than or, or less than 1 half? Less than. So it's under, right? <laughs> Why so funny? So it's under 1 half. How about when x equal to negative 2? It will be 1 over 9. 1 over 9 is lower 1 quarter. So what do you see? You see this purple curve, when x is less than 0, it is under the black curve. But when x is greater than 0, it's above the black curve. Do you see that? OK? Yes? OK. And they are both what? They are both increasing, because the base is greater than 1. OK? So far OK? Nine. 
uh, when x equal to 2, 3 squared is 9? Uh, I don't know, but why are we trying to drawing the line here? I'm saying something. I'm saying uh, the, the curve of 3 to the power x is above the black curve, which is 2 to the power x, when x is positive. Okay? Because um, the base is, is greater than 1, so the more that you the higher the, the exponent, the higher the value. And when it is less than zero, right? When it is less than zero, um, you are going to see that the number is getting smaller. Okay, because it's one over that bigger number. Yeah, you probably would like to compare about its height uh, with, with the same input, okay? So with the same input x, with the same input x, you are going to see the larger base, which is greater than 1, is going to have higher value if it's greater than 0, okay? But when it is less than 0, it's different. Now, what about if the base is 1 half? What about the base is one half? Okay. What about the base is one half? Let me put the val uh, the chart here, and the graph here. Okay. I want you to graph y equals to one half to the power x now. Okay. Can I have you have a larger space for your graphing? I will give you about three minutes to graph this. Okay. Again, you would like to establish a table, x and y. Okay. So what do you see? When x equal to 0, 1 half to the power 0 is what? Thank you. You are awesome. Okay? When x equal to 1, 1 half to the power 1 is what? 1 half. When x equal to 2, 1 half square is what? 1 quarter. Right? So see, when x equal to 0, it is 1. When x equal to 1, it will be 1 half. When x equal to 2, it will be 1 quarter. Do you see that? When x equal to 3, it's going to be 1 eighth. See, it's getting less. Right? What about when x equal to negative 1? 1 half to the power negative 1 is what? 1 half to the power Negative 1 is taking reciprocal. What is a reciprocal 1 half? 2. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. When x equal to negative 2, what is 1 half to the power negative 2? It will be 4. Three, four. Okay, when x equal to negative 3, it will become 1 half to the power negative 3. 1 half to the power negative 3 is 2 to the third, which is 8. So it will be high above here. Okay. So what do you see? It is decreasing. You see this? It's decreasing. All right? It's decreasing. When the base is less than 1, when the base is less than 1, it is decreasing. When the what? When the, base when the base is less than one. No. Uh, oh, you are saying the reflection. Yeah. I, so when it, whenever it's a reciprocal, it reflects. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, because you are looking at this as 2 to the power negative x. Yeah, in that sense. Because uh, he is asking a, uh, a deeper question that how do you use transformation to see this graph. Um, it is looking at it as 2 to the power negative x. So your x change to its opposite. You will cover this in the next level math class. Yeah, but good that you ask. Yes. Yeah. What would be the inverse? What would be the inverse of what? Of that function? Um, the inverse for that one is log. And we are going to talk about that. Yes. OK. All right. Let's do this. Let's finish this one, and then we will talk about the inverse. OK. Is that OK so far? This is 8. Um, it's a decreasing function, OK? When it is decreasing, when the base is what? Less than 1. Thank you. When the base is less than 1, it's decreasing. So far, so good? OK. Are they 1 to 1? And the answer is yes. If it's increasing or it's decreasing, it is one to one because all this horizontal line will only have one intersection, right? So it passes horizontal line test. Yeah. It is one to one. So conclusion that every exponential function is one two, one. So if it's one to one, it will have its inverse. Am I correct? So its inverse function exists. OK? You can talk about its inverse function. Its inverse is also a function. OK? And you know how to graph it. We said already. How do you graph it? You draw a 45 degree line, y equals to x, and reflect. Am I correct? Can I do it? Yes, I would love to do it. OK. Which one you want me to do? Yesterday, we did the 2 to the x. So today, we will do this. Is that OK? May we do this one today? OK. So can I have all of you draw the line of symmetry? It will be this. Right? The line of symmetry is y equals to x. This is your line of symmetry. OK? Now, we would like to draw its inverse. OK? We are just talking about drawing, OK? And we are going to define it very quickly after we finish this drawing. So now you see you have 0, 1 for, two, for the function. So what is the, uh, the point in the inverse function? It will be 1, 0, which is here. Right? You have 1 and 1 half. So what is the point on the inverse? It will be what? 1 half and 1. 1 half is here. 1 half and 1. And 1 is where? One is here. OK? And then you have 2 and 1 quarter. 2 and 1 half for the points on the graph. So its inverse will be inverse. The point on the inverse function will be 1 quarter and 2, so which is here. Right? OK? And here, 3 comma 1 eighth. So on the inverse function will be 1 eighth and 3. Wow. OK. How about negative 1 comma 2? It will become 2 and negative 1. So 2 negative 1 is where? It's here. Negative 2 comma 4. On the inverse function will be 4 negative 2. Is that OK? 
So, what do you see? You see this. Okay? Can you see? Now, negative 3, 8, you will get what? 8, comma, negative 3. So, this is negative 3. So, it will be where here. So, let me. Okay? So, are these two curves? Symmetric about this 45 degree line? Can you see? That is your 45 degree line. The black curve, this is our black curve for 1 half to the power x, okay? And this is our red curve for its inverse if we just use interchange x and y, okay? Sorry? Question? Okay, for x and y, we have 0, 1, 2, 3. Mm -hmm. And I just don't get what you're doing there. You mean here? Yeah. Um, this for the original curve, 0, you get 1, 1, you get 1 half. Do we have to go up to 3? Or what um, I just tried to plot enough points so that you can see clearly the shape of the graph, okay? <laughs> Does it make sense for you if we just look at the, uh, the graphing part, okay? Now, I would like to, not to erase that because I know some of you would like to see them. So I'm going to have um, the following, sorry. Square root and exponent? Yes. Yeah, sure. You mean, um, you're talking about tomorrow's. Uh, yeah, we can. But, uh, okay. I thought that we have, we have going over this. Wait a second. The only thing that I, I think that we uh, really need to go over for tomorrow's exam, okay, um, yeah, we can. It is for Tuesday. Yeah, that is for Tuesday. That is for Tuesday. Yeah. It's kind of a lot for you guys. It's all the things that you have done. Okay, what is going to be on tomorrow? Yes. Only the graphing, the shifting, and finding the domain, the linear, quadratic, radical. Yeah. Or, let me tell you, my friend, if it's better, um, I'm kind of like, keep thinking. I can make it on Tuesday so that you, you don't feel like so much. But then I will give you a good quiz tomorrow so that, you know, you get a feel. Right. Would that be better for all of you? Everything is together on Tuesday? Yeah. Then I will have, okay. It's better to be half and half. I think so, too. I think so, too. Because no, you... Uh, but you know what? <laughs> okay. Um, let me tell you, okay, let's quickly look at this. It, tomorrow's will be very light. I just want to give you, let, let's look at it, okay? Can we? Uh, and I already, have the, I already have the key prepared for this blue packet, okay? And I'm thinking that um, we have gone through this for so long. So I'm thinking, if, as long as I give you the key, it's very clear what's going on, right? Am I correct? Yes. Unless uh, you have a specific question that you would like to go over right now. The key has step by step, um, I guess it's written step by step, like what you're doing. Yeah. It's not just the answer, it's like 
Yeah, work. I have my work. Okay. I have my work. No, I, I'm just asking everybody, would you like to combine it as a, a, a big test, or would you like to have a lighter one tomorrow, okay, and we can have the rest on Tuesday, okay, so, you know, let me, let me tell you, you have options. I'm trying to help you guys, okay? I don't want you to feel like, uh, you know, you are, um, how do I say, <laughs> overwhelming, okay? Um, is this blue packet like very hard for you guys? Okay. It's on the packet. I mean, we, we spent time earlier telling you which one is not going to be on tomorrow, right? Didn't we? You wrote it down, I know, right? And I think this time I'm, I'm kind of like telling you, these are the things I'm going to test you. And I usually don't do this. And I shouldn't do this in the future. But I just want you to feel comfortable for the first time. Okay? The problems will be so similar to this. And we don't want to, we don't want to um, kind of like give you a surprise. But these are something that you, you did for two weeks already. Okay? Telling me which one that you feel uncomfortable. Yes. Can I cover number 10? Yes. I'm asking at the beginning of the class. Now I'm getting somebody <laughs> to ask. OK. All right, number 10. Let's look at number 10. All right. Do you know how to grab x cubed? Yes. yes, right? 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 8. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 8. You connect them. This is your y equal to x cubed. Is that right? Okay, now grab its inverse function. How do you grab its inverse function? Okay, how do you grab inverse function? Well, y equal to x cubed. To grab its inverse function, you would try to enter, okay, the so step one, you let y equal to x cubed. Step two, how do you do? You will interchange x and y, am I correct? And you get x equal to y cubed. Yes? What is the step three? You want to solve for what? Y. How do you solve for y? Take the cube root on each side. Yes? OK. I will stop here. Any question? Any question so far? Is it OK? Yes. And step four, you just conclude, say, so f inverse of x is the cube root of x, right? What is the cube root of x? Well, one, you get one. Okay, zero, you get zero. Remember to, choose, to, to bring your color pen tomorrow, okay? Because you are going to, and then 8, you get 2, right? Is that OK? And how about the negative 1? Negative 1, you get negative 1. And negative 8, you get negative 2. So it's, it's this, right? This is y equal to cube root of x. Is that okay? Okay. So 
Eleven C. We just as what we did in class. They are not equal. That means the composition is not commutative. Let me tell you, all the things that I test you, we already, we already gone through in our class. Everything is on the on the note. Yes. How do you do this one? Number 10? Okay. Yes. Can you show how you got the answers for the three series of the three star effects? Here? Yeah, can you show how you got the points? How do I get those points? Okay. Um, this is your our fundamental function, remember? So we say when x equal to 0, you get 0. Right? When x equal to 1, the cube root of 1 is 1. Right? When x equal to 8, the cube root of 8 is 2. Right? Why is it choosing what's easier to do? Uh, you can pick other number. If I pick up 2, it will be cube root of 2. If I pick up 3, it will be cube root of 3. If you pick up 4, it will be pick cube root of 4, but all those numbers are irrational, not easy for us to grab. So if I pick up 8, it's cube root of 8, and that is uh, an integer 2. So it's just easier. You are so smart. Yes. <laughs> Uh, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, <laughs> over there, uh, oh, well, I already erased, I, we learn how to find the function, uh, inverse function, right? Uh, for this one, because it's a, a fundamental function, so it's very easy, you can just interchange x and y. Yes, you can always do that, okay? Um, and you may do that, no problem. But Look, I still ask you to find the expression for f inverse, right? Finding that you interchange x and y and plot this red curve, everybody can do it, but do you know how to express it, right? So you still need to show it, okay? And once you get this, well, this is a fundamental function, which is a cube root, right? And someone just say, how do you grab this one? Yeah, and I think it's very important you know how to grab this one, okay? Is that okay? So far, so good. So if I have this tomorrow, you will be able to do it, right? Okay. Okay. Um, we will have to leave. And so. <laughs> you will have just whatever that, yeah, the notes and the homework due tomorrow. So the test two is part one? No. I haven't given you text, yeah, because I want you to have something simple for this part, but we will have it in the future. Yes. Yeah, I want everybody to keep up with the, uh, the my math lab, okay? The only part one, part one, yeah, for the graphing part. Great, thank you.